I've tried being a little forceful and chasing her off, but it's weird. <laughs> you see the chicken? You want the chicken? Oh boy. Daddy's gonna catch a chicken. You think he can? I don't know if he can. Uh-oh, are you running off? We got a Henry on the loose and a rooster on the loose. Both are concerning. If you gotta get Henry then. I'll have to catch him here in a minute. Henry. I gotta go catch him. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna set this right here. We'll see what happens. Henry. Got
still hungry? A cracker, tasty. Those are crackers, that's right. <clears throat> alligator, can you say alligator? Wow. Rawr, that's right. Here. Um, what about that guy right there? Who's that? Bee. That's a bee. What noise does a bee make? A bee. Squirrel, yeah. What noise does a bee make? Bzz. Bzz, that's right. You want more rice? Do you want to hold the spoon? Good job. Good job. What is this right here? What is that? Pepper. Pepper, that's right. What are those over there? Meadows. Meadows, that's right. You're learning your garden, son. One day you're gonna hold this camera. You're gonna be my little filming assistant one day. Hold the camera. You wanna hold the camera one day? Hold the camera. Here. Hold the camera. I can hold the camera. Hold the camera. <laughs> you're doing it. What are those? A sunflower. Who's on the sunflower? Do you see those bees on the sunflower? Look at those bees. Those are honey bees too. I think it's time for us to take out this cucumber. These cucumbers, bud. Maybe put a cover crop in there. Cucumber. Cucumber, that's right. Hi, yo folks. Wanted to give you an update. It's been a slow week, but there's been a few things that have happened. A few questions I have for you. And I wanted to give you a preamble for next week, which will not be slow. In fact, it'll be pretty action-packed and violent. <laughs> I'm chasing this little guy around. He's actually hanging out with me today. One of the privileges I have is being able to spend half of my week with Henry. Both Holly and I work part-time jobs. And on the days when she's working, like today, if Grammy and Poppy or Nana isn't watching him, then I'm watching him. And he gets to hang out with me on the homestead. And one of the things about hanging out on a homestead with a toddler is you need to be very, very vigilant. <laughs> They require a lot of supervision. I love it. It's one of my favorite things, just walking around the homestead with Henry. Obviously not doing anything too crazy. When I was on the tractor earlier, Holly was hanging out with him. I would not do that with if it was just me and him. But we, we are able to do basic garden chores and walk around. And as he gets older, he'll be taking on more chores. So I'll probably put him in charge of the chickens. And any other livestock that we get, he'll be deeply involved with. But for now, at this age, almost two years old, it's a, it's a joy just to be able to walk around with him. So I'm not taking any of this for granted. I love it a lot. As you may have guessed from the beginning of this video, we are going to be processing our breast chickens. They're hanging out in here right now. We're going to be processing them in a few days. They're of age. I think right now they're, they're somewhere between 14 and 16 weeks old, which is exactly the age that they're ready to harvest. They're ready to process. I'm looking forward to eating them because Jim and Kathy of Two Turtles Homestead, who actually gifted us with the eggs for these breast chickens, they let, they let us try some breast chicken meat a few months ago, and it was succulent. It was so good. It was, it was breast chicken breast, and it was the juiciest chicken breast I've ever had in my life. No joke. No hyperbole, it really, truly was. So I'm really looking forward to having that. But in addition to them being of age, they've also been very aggressive. One of the roosters in particular has been extra aggressive and violent, and I actually have to keep him out here at night, separate from the other chickens. They've been getting into a lot of fights because of these two roosters. They've been very aggressive. It just hasn't been a pleasant environment. So in the next few days, we will be harvesting most of the breast chickens. We're gonna hold on to one rooster and two hens to lay eggs for me and hopefully have more breast chickens. I'm not going to get the chicken out. I'm going to let them stay in. They just want to hang in there right now because it's warm. Earlier today, I busted out all the equipment that I'll need for chicken processing. The outdoor sink, the processing table, which I'll probably cover in wax paper, but still, good, still a good idea to clean it. The plucker, which I didn't use for the turkeys, but I do use for the chickens. The boiling pot, the boiling pot heater, and then of course these suction bags, these shrink bags that I will place the uh, finished 
chicken meat inside. These things are great. I'll probably show you an example of how they're used once it comes time to actually process them. But <clears throat> we've got all the equipment we'll need. We'll probably set this up in the lean-to. We'll lock the breast chickens inside of their pen and then just process them one by one, take them out and process them right there under the lean-to. It's very easy to do. It's very convenient. The kill cones are right there, set up and ready to go. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be an easy process. Um, we're also probably going to call some of the roosters that we have. We have like five or six roosters in this barnyard, and I think we're going to cut down that rooster population so we only have one or two roosters. We're gonna wash your hands. All right, we're washing it good. There's your other hand. Run it under the water. Okay. All right, now we're gonna dry them. Okay. Dry. Now we're gonna dry your hands. <laughs> it's fun to play in the barnyard with the chickens, but when we're done, it's probably a good idea to wash our hands. Right, pal? A home. A home. That's a fig tree, bud. Which tree? That's the fig tree. That's the fig tree. You see it? Fig tree, that's right. It's getting bigger. Fig tree, can you say fig? Fig tree, that's right. I'm not sure how well you can see from this distance. There's a wild turkey hen posted up right outside of our, there she is, our perimeter netting around our barnyard. And she's been there now for two days. She refuses to leave. On the other side of the netting, you have our domesticated turkeys, Lenny, Laverne, the adults, and then the five new, five or six new young turkeys. They're all poults at the moment. And they're all hanging out together. And this wild turkey hen, she's been hanging out here, like I said, for two days now, and she will not leave. You know, initially it was kind of funny. It was kind of a joke because it was like a wink, wink, nod, nod. I'm pretty sure that she was mating with Lenny. Lenny's molting right now, by the way. He looks a little bedraggled, a little hangdog. And that's all fine and good. Do I, am I that concerned if Lenny mates with this wild turkey hen? Not really. She's been inside the, the perimeter of the barnyard fencing before. But now that she's been here for a long period of time, and as you can see, the young turkeys, the turkey poults are following her around. They're, I don't know if they're imprinting on her or she's imprinting on them as their potential mom. I, I've started to get a little bit concerned for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't want her to lead away my young turkey poults. Although with how static she's been, she's just been in place now for several days. I'm not sure if she would go away. Another big concern that I have is, is diseases. I'm not sure what kind of diseases are out there among the wild turkey population, but she could potentially have something. And if she were to intermingle closely with our turkeys, there's a, there's a chance she could bring something off to them. So I'm not quite what, sure what to do. There's part of me that was thinking about just dropping the fence and letting her go in and give her easier access to the inside. I'm not sure, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm not, if, if anyone's out there that has successfully co-opted or adopted a wild poultry, whether it's chickens or turkeys, into their domesticated barn flock, I'd be very interested to hear from you. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And I wanna, I wanna protect my own flock, my own investment, my own livestock as much as possible without subjecting them to potential disease or getting saying forget the domesticated life we're out of here and they the young poults leave with her i don't want either of those scenarios so if anyone has experience with that kind of situation i'd be very very interested in hearing about it i've tried being a little forceful and chasing her off or at least approaching her and she does leave but she always has been coming back and this has been happening now for for two days Maybe all she wants to do is mate with Lenny. And then once Lenny successfully mates her, she'll be on her way. I don't know, but it's weird. <laughs> I'll do more research again. Maybe I can just adopt her into the crew and she's, she's part of our flock. She clearly likes it here. And if, if that's a safe option, then I, I may do that.
I may bring her in, clip her wings, and let her hang out with the rest of them, but only if it's a safe option. So believe it or not, we actually have not started our smoker once yet this season. This is the first, the first time we've actually busted it out in anticipation of smoking. And so one of the things that we do at the outset of smoking season, of barbecuing season, is clean this thing out. And the best way to clean them out from in our experience is just turning the heat all the way up, filling this thing with your pellets and letting it burn out. I think that's all you, it's been so long, I don't even remember. Plug in your grill, power on and set to smoke. Yeah. Let's just turn her all the way up. Eventually you should start hearing pellets hit the hopper. Okay. And if not, then we have to hit prime. So, we'll give it a second. I see them moving. You see that? Yep, yep, yep. Looks like it's doing its thing. So we'll give it a minute. So dad, we set up this tent for a barbecue right. that we're gonna be having yeah. with some family. But I'm thinking this might be good to process the chickens under in a few days. Instead of closing them into their stall, their barn stall and doing it in the lean-to, just taking this and putting it maybe further out in some shade just and setting all my shade. equipment up under here, yeah. which it'll fit, it'll all fit in here. And they'll give me some shade and they'll give me a nice work area. Yeah. Would you mind if I borrowed your tent to no. process chickens? No, so you chickens? would just keep it, you'd just keep it right here then? No, I'd probably, I mean, maybe. that's fine if you want to. I could keep it right here, but it'd probably be easier if I moved it over to the other side by the kill cones. Yeah. And just set up, you know, set up the sink, the plucker, and the processing table. I might do that if yeah. you don't mind. This this is taller. For some reason, I thought this would be a lot shorter, yeah. a lot smaller, but this is actually a pretty tall it's structure. Room, it? It's easy for me to get around. I think this might be my ticket for when it comes time to process the chickens here in a few days. Yeah. My processing tent. It's roomy. Yeah. Well, that's the update for today. I was really close to not putting out a video at all just because not much happened this week but sometimes i prefer to just give updates rather than skip videos altogether and given what's going to be going on next week i think it's a good idea that we put out an update so thanks for hanging out with us and until we see you again yeah that's a turkey until we see you again next time remember as always slowly slowly